Hello guys! Welcome to another exciting section of the course, Building Data Pipelines with Logstash. One of the important processes of Logstash is converting unstructured log data into structured data, which helps in searching for relevant information easily and also assists in analysis. Now, we will move on to the first video of this section that deals with parsing and enriching logs using Logstash. The analysis of structured data is easier and helps us find meaningful or deeper analysis, rather than trying to perform analysis on unstructured data. Most analysis tools depend on structured data. Kibana, which we will be making use of for analysis and visualization, can be used effectively if the data in Elasticsearch is right. Log data is typically made up of two parts, as shown on the screen. Here, timestamp is the time when the event occurred, and data is the information about the event. Data may contain just a single piece of information, or it may contain many pieces of information. Let us look at the need for Logstash. We would need to have a mechanism for extracting this information from the data, and thus converting the unstructured data or event into a structured data or event. This is where the filter section of the Logstash pipeline comes in handy. The filter section is made up of one or more filter plugins that assist in parsing and enriching the log data. Let's look at the functions of filter plugins. A filter plugin is used to perform transformations on the data. It allows us to combine one or more plugins, and the order of the plugins defines the order in which the data is transformed. A sample filter section in Logstash pipeline would look like this. The generated event from the input plugin goes through each of the plugins defined in the filter section, during which it transforms the event based on the plugins defined. Finally, it is sent to the output plugin to send the event to the appropriate destination. Let's explore some common filter plugins used for transformation. We will start with the first plugin, that is, CSV filter. This filter is useful for parsing .csv files. This plugin takes the event containing CSV data, parses it, and stores it as individual fields. Let's take some sample data and use a CSV filter to parse data out of it. So we will create a new file and name it as users.csv. In this file, we will store this sample data. This code block shows the usage of the CSV filter plugin. The CSV plugin has no required parameters. It scans each row of data and uses default column names such as column 1, column 2, and so on to place the data. This plugin by default uses a comma as a field separator. The default separator can be changed by using the separator parameter of the plugin. One can either specify the list of column names using the columns parameter, which accepts an array of column names, or by using the auto detect underscore column underscore names parameter set to true. In doing so, one can let the plugin know that it needs to detect the column names automatically. So, we will create another file and name it as csvfile.conf. Here, we will add this code snippet implementing the configuration. As you can see here, we are using auto detect underscore column underscore names parameter and set it to true. Lastly, we will save both the files. After that, using command prompt, we will navigate to the directory where we have stored the CSV file.conf file and this logstash command to display the data within the file. Grab a cup of coffee, as it may take some time to complete its execution. This is result of the data saved in the users.csv file that we created previously. If you remember, we had used auto detect column name parameter in the csv underscore file conf. In the generated output, you can see that the column names are detected automatically. Lastly, we will terminate the job. Next is mutate filter. This filter allows one to perform general mutations on fields. One can rename, convert, strip, and modify fields in the events. Let's enhance the CSV file.conf file that we created previously with the mutate filter and understand its usage. In the CSV underscore file.conf, we will replace the existing code with this big block of code to show the use of the mutate filter. This part of the code is the main change, as here we are defining the mutate function. Here, the convert setting within the filter helps to change the data type of a field. 
the valid conversion targets are integer, string, float, and boolean. The rename setting within the filter helps to rename one or more fields. The preceding example renames the fname field to first name and lname to last name. Next is the g sub settings. It is used to match a regular expression against a field value and replace all matches with a replacement string. As regular expressions work only on strings, this field can only take a field containing string or an array of strings. It takes an array consisting of three elements per substitution, that is, it takes the field name, regex, and the replacement string. For example, dot in the email ID field is replaced with underscore. This strip settings is used to strip the leading and training white spaces. Uppercase is used to convert the string to uppercase. In the preceding example, the value in the gender field is converted to uppercase. Similarly, by using various settings of the mutate filter, such as lowercase, update, replace, join, and merge, one can lowercase a string, update an existing field, replace the value of a field, join an array of values, or merge fields. Before moving ahead, save this file. Switch to the command prompt and view the output. To view the updated content of the csv underscore file dot conf file, we will execute this command. Wait patiently, as it may take some time to complete the execution. Once it's done, you will see this output with necessary changes that we made in the file. Lastly, we will terminate the batch job. Now, let us understand what is Grok Filter. This is a powerful and often used plugin for passing the unstructured data into structured data, thus making the data easily queryable or filterable. In simple terms, Grok is a way of matching a line against a pattern, which is based on a regular expression, and mapping specific parts of the line to dedicated fields. The general syntax of a Grok pattern is as it is displayed on the screen. Pattern is the name of the pattern that will match the text. The field name is the identifier for the piece of text being matched. By default, grokhead fields are strings. To cast either to float or int values, one can use this format. Logstash ships with about 120 patterns by default. These patterns are reusable and extensible. Also, patterns is consist of a label and a regex. An example is shown on the screen. It can also contain other patterns. If a pattern is not available, then one can use a regular expression using this format. For example, the regex would match telephone numbers, such as 123, 123, 1234, and place the past value into the phone field. Let's look at some examples to understand Grok better. Similar to the previous examples, we will create a new file and name it as grok1.conf. Here we will add this code snippet and understand the code in detail. If the input line is of the format shown in the overlay, then the output will be generated as this code snippet. There is a tool hosted on this website which helps one to build grok patterns that match the log. Further, we will move on to the next type of filter, date filter. This plugin is used for passing the date from the fields. This plugin is very handy and useful when working with time series events. By default, Logstash adds A at the rate timestamp field for each event, representing the time it processed the event. But the user might be interested in the actual timestamp of the generated event rather than the process timestamp. So, using this filter, one can pass the date or timestamp from the fields and then use it as the timestamp of the event. Let's create a new file and name it as basic underscore date filter dot text file. Here we will show that how this plugin can be used. By default, the date filter overwrites the timestamp field, but this can be changed by providing an explicit target field. So let's add it here. Thus, the user can keep the event time processed by Logstash too. Then, if the time field has multiple possible time formats, then those can be specified as an array of values to the match parameter. You can have a look at the format here. By default, the time zone will be the server local time unless specified. To manually specify the time zone, use the time zone parameter or setting of the plugin. The valid time zone values can be found at this URL. Moving on to GeoIP filter. 
This plugin is used to enrich the log information. Given the IP address, it adds the geographical location of the IP address. It finds the geographical information by performing a lookup against the GeoLite2 city database for valid IP addresses and populates fields with results. GeoLite2 city database is a product of the MaxMind organization and is available under the CCA ShareAlike 4.0 license. Logstash comes bundled with GeoLite2 city database, so when performing a lookup, it need not perform any network call, hence the lookup is fast. The only required parameter for this plugin is the source, which accepts an IP address in string format. This plugin creates a geo IP field with geographical details such as country, postal code, region, city, and so on. A geo IP and location field is created if the geo IP lookup returns a latitude and longitude, and it is mapped to the geo underscore point type when indexing to Elasticsearch. Geo IP underscore point fields can be used for Elasticsearch's geospatial query, facet, and filter functions, and can be used to generate Kibana's map visualization. The last filter type is user agent filter. This filter passes user agent strings into structured data based on browser scope data. You can learn more about it at this link. It adds information about the user agent such as family, operating system, version, device, and so on. To extract the user agent details, this filter plugin makes use of the regexes.yaml database that is bundled with Logstash. The only required parameter for this plugin is the source parameter, which accepts string containing user agent details.